Good evening, everyone. So this week we are continuing our lecture series on dermatopathology, and this week we'll be discussing the leprosy reaction pattern. Now, the reason that I decided to make a separate video on leprosy reaction pattern is because this reaction pattern is very important to understand, especially for us living in a country which is endemic for leprosy. Okay, and um, more in most of the books, leprosy reaction pattern is covered in granulomatous tissue reaction pattern because that's what are there in leprosy. We have granulomas. But uh, treating this reaction pattern as separate from other reaction patterns makes it easier to understand the histopathology and the pathology of leprosy. So with this video, we'll try to understand and unravel and make things easier that how does leprosy uh, uh, goes from one part of the spectrum, which is the tuberculoid pole, and gradually makes its way or gradually um, clinically uh, goes towards the lepromatous pole okay so we'll try to understand what is happening at the at cellular cellular level and whether those uh, cellular level changes are seen and on biopsy and how do we appreciate those changes in biopsy so with keeping that in mind i have decided to make a separate video on leprosy reaction pattern so that we can understand all the different biopsies that we regularly see in our leprosy patients okay so without much further ado let's start leprosy reaction pattern so, as I said in most of the books, it is labeled as granulomatous tissue reaction pattern because that's what we see. We see a lot of granulomas. But these granulomas are a bit different. Okay. And their composition changes depending on what uh, part of the spectrum of leprosy we are dealing with. Okay. We know that Ritley Joplin classification includes uh, an aspect of histopathology. That whatever, cha whatever changes we are seeing in biopsy, Ridley Joplin includes that while classifying uh, leprosy cases into tuberculoid pole or BD leprosy or BBPL lepromatous leprosy. So, in uh, when we use the Ridley Joplin classification, we are keeping the histological uh, characteristics of leprosy together. Okay. Now, the major thing that we have to keep an eye out is perivascular granulomas. That is where we see those granulomas. Okay. So, depending on what part of the epidermis is involved, depending on what cells make the granulomas, we classify histologically uh, leprosy into different sections. Okay, we'll discuss them in very much detail as we go through this uh, presentation. Now, as we move from the tubercular pole to the lepromatous pole, we will see that lymphocytes, which were initially making a lot of granulomas in the tubercular pole, they are gradually shifting to histiocytes. Okay, so as we go from tuberculoid to lepromatous pole, as we are moving through the down spectrum, we'll realize that the granulomas, which were initially formed by lymphocytes, are now being regularly formed by histocytes. Okay, so as we move down the spectrum, we see this gradual change in the contents of the granulomas, contents of the inflammatory cells. So keep that line in mind that as we move down the spectrum, lymphocytes change to, or lymphos, the content, the constituent cells are initially lymphocytes and then they change to uh, histiocytes okay let's move forward now uh, this part is very important to understand and if you understand this concept then your under, your uh, understanding of pathological aspects of leprosy will be very very clear okay and uh, i will spend a bit of time understanding the spectrum of leprosy now what do we mean by spectrum spectrum means we have a spectrum going from the lepromatous pole, LL pole, to the tuberculoid pole. Okay, and the spectrum is lepromatous leprosy, borderline, uh, okay, borderline lepromatous, borderline, borderline, borderline tuberculoid, and tuberculoid pole. Okay, and as you see, the color is changing. The pink color is of histiocytes, and that is what we see. They are very pinkish color, eosinophilic cytoplasm. Okay, so histiocytes. And as we move towards the tuberculoid pole, we see more of lymphocytes and those are blue in color. Okay. So as we are seeing, uh, seeing in this diagram, as we move from lepromatous to tuberculoid pole or tuberculoid pole to lepromatous pole, the cellular contents change from uh, histocyte to lymphocytes or lymphocyte to histocytes. We are clear about it. We also have indeterminate leprosy. Now, indeterminate leprosy, as the name suggests, has not yet 
progress to that extent so that we can classify it into a certain segment okay so indeterminate leprosy can actually go forward the the disease can go forward and then the segregation can happen to a certain sector of the spectrum okay so indeterminate leprosy can lead to formation uh, or can lead to any of the stages of the spectrum okay now we know that the bb type is the most unstable form so bb usually uh, either downgrades towards the lepromatous pole, okay, so here it downgrades or it can heal or slightly improve towards the tubercular pole when the infection is controlled, okay. So, BB type is the most unstable form. Now, let's see the cellular players. So, in tubercular pole, you have majorly lymphocytes. So, you have a lot of lymphocytes. These are lymphocytes. A few of histocytes are there. These are actually macrophages which have modified themselves so that they can stay there in the tissue and control the bacillary uh, multiplication, control the leprae multiplication. And we have few macrophages which have just reached there. Understood? As we move down the spectrum, in Bt leprosy, the quantity of lymphocytic infiltrate decreases and now the inflammatory infiltrate is majorly formed by histocytes. So we can see that the histocytic numbers are increasing. Now, what we denote by tubercular pole is that in tubercular pole, the body is able to contain the infection. Okay, the body forms granulomas around the bacilli and they contain the infection. The infection is stopped at that point. Okay, while as we move down the spectrum towards the lepromatous pole, we understand that now the body is not able to control the infection. The bacilli keeps on dividing. So, what body does is the body just sequesters it. The body just catches the bacilli and keeps it there. Okay, so in the tuberculoid pole, the body is stopping the bacilli to multiply and destroying the bacilli. While in lepromatous pole, the bacilli is not been able to destroy by the uh, by the body. So body is just controlling the spread of bacilli. They are not able to destroy the bacilli. It's just controlling the bacilli. So as we move down the spectrum towards the lepromatous pole, we see that the macrophages will increase. Because that is what the function of macrophage is. The function is to engulf, to eat the bacilli and keep it inside the cell so that it's not spread towards the body. So it's a way of controlling the infection. Okay. And we can see that the macrophage now have living bacilli inside it. Can you see those red dashes? So these are nothing but living bacilli inside the macrophage. We can also see that the lymphocytes are decreasing and histocytes are increasing in number. As you move from BL leprosy to LL leprosy, we see a lot of foamy histocytes. So these are foamy histocytes. And where the foam comes from? Foam comes from lipids. Okay. So when the cell dies, all the mycolic acids, all the lipid component of the cell membrane, it gets stored inside the histocytes. Okay. And when it goes, when it, when it, when it is stored inside the histocyte, during the processing of the biopsy, the lipids get washed away. So in biopsy, you see empty spaces, a lot of empty spaces in between, and it gives an appearance of foam, like a styrofoam. And that is why we, are, we call these cells as foamy histocytes. They have a lot of foam in between. That means they have a lot of lipid inside. So we see a, a lot of macrophages, which have living bacilli inside them. We have foamy histocytes and we have lymphocytes. Okay, so now you can understand as we are moving down the spectrum from tubercular pole to lepromatous pole, we are seeing a decrease in number of lymphocytes and increase in number of histocytes, which eventually become foamy histocytes. The macrophages also keep on increasing in number and now we have living bacilli inside the macrophages. Clear? Let's move forward. Give, give some time to this slide, understand what I'm trying to say. And if you know this slide, then you can understand what is happening on the, uh, in a patient of leprosy. And then you can easily understand the biopsy. So, uh, in the last slide, we discussed about the spectrum of leprosy and, and what all changes occur as, as we move from the tubercular pole to the lepromatous pole. And we know that in Joplin classification, we use histopathology. Okay, so what is the Ridley Joplin spectrum? It's the same spectrum, the same as the classification, and it starts from the indeterminate to tuberculoid, borderline tuberculoid, borderline borderline Hansen's, borderline lepromatous leprosy, lepromatous leprosy, polar and subpolar both, and lepra reaction in other cases. So we'll utilize these headings to discuss the histopathological findings of uh, various aspects of leprosy, starting first with the indeterminate Hansen's. Okay, let's
start with indeterminate leprosy. So in indeterminate leprosy, usually we see it in younger patients. It's an early and unstable form of leprosy. Okay, so it's an early form and we know that it can modify and go, the indeterminate leprosy can modify and go to BL, BB, BT, in fact to TT and LL. So, so eventually it can progress to any form of the spectrum. Okay, it is also known as the pre-granulomatous stage because the granulomas are not formed. It is so early in stage that the granulomas are not yet formed. Okay. Because when the granulomas form, depending on what cells are forming the granulomas, you can classify them into a certain sector. Now, 70% of the cases heal spontaneously. So the immunity is able to kill the bacilli and uh, get rid of the infection. So in 70% of the cases, it may heal spontaneously. It has heavy lymphocytic infiltrate. So in Hansen's, in leprosy, lymphocytes are the first cells that come to kill the bacilli. Okay, I know in the previous part we have previous videos we have discussed that neutrophils are the first cells that come. But here, when you are talking about bacilli that needs to be contained, that needs to be stopped, the lymphocytes come, they are recruited. And if you have any issue, any uh, confusion regarding what actually happens, what, what does the bacilli do to the body, I have already made two videos on pathological aspects of leprosy. Search them in the channel and go through it, and you will find your concepts regarding the pathology of leprosy will be very much clear. Okay, so you have a heavy lymphocytic infiltrate with minimal epithelial histocytes. Okay, so lymphocytes more, epithelial cells come. The infiltrate involves the nerves, so there is neurovascular inflammation that is inflammation around the nerves. Okay, this stage of leprosy precedes clinical manifestation by three to six months. And it starts to appear when around 30% of the nerve is damaged. Clear? The AFB is difficult to demonstrate. Only 20% of cases show positive AFB and you have to search for them properly. Okay? Uh, remember that in indeterminate lep leprosy, it's an early stage. The granulomas are not yet formed and you will only see a perineural lymphocytic infiltrate. Okay? So you will see a perineural lymphocytic infiltrate. Okay, let's move forward. So look at this histopathology, okay. This I've taken from the IL textbook on leprosy. And you will see that this is a nerve, okay. Can you appreciate the waviness of the neur neural tissue, okay. Go back to the lecture on histology of dermis where we discuss how, how, how does a nerve look under a microscope. So look at this wavy nature of the nerve. Okay, and around the nerve with the arrow, you can easily see lymphocytic infiltrate. So the black is the nerve and you can see little, little lymphocytes. So lymphocytes are large cells and they have a large basophilic or blue colored nucleus. And you can see that the lymphocytes are going inside the nerve and, in, and infiltrating it. So this is what you see. You see a perineural lymphocytic infiltration in indeterminate leprosy. That is all. No granulomas, only perineural lymphocytic infiltration okay clear let's move forward here again you can just see the perineural invasion so this hole is a nerve okay this hole is a nerve and you can see those little this circular cells all these circular cells let me change the color all these circular cells this blue uh, darkly dark purple stain cells, these are nothing but lymphocytes. And in this slide, the lymphocytes have infiltrated inside the nerve and they have started destroying the nerve, nerve, nerve tissue. And that is what we see in leprosy. Sorry, uh, in the dominate leprosy, we see perineural lymphocytic infiltration. Just remember that. Okay, let's move forward. So let's start the Joplin spectrum, Ridley Joplin spectrum. Okay. And we will start first with the tuberculoid leprosy. Now remember what I said in tuberculoid leprosy, lymphocytes would be high, epithelioid cells would be low, no foaming histocytes, and AFB also would be negative because the body is able to get rid of the infection and kill the bacilli. Okay, so there will be no AFB. Let's move forward. So Jada Son was the scientist who uh, coined the term tuberculoid. And that's what we started using because it forms tubercles. Okay, the lesions were like a tubercle. That is why this form is known as tuberculoid leprosy. So it forms the tubercle. Let me just write again. 
to work with. Okay. In this, you see epithelial granuloma in giant cells, which are of the Langens type and lymphocytes. But ma major, major, what you see is lymphocytes. There is a strong cell mediated immunity and sequestration of bacilli and granuloma, leading to destruction of AFB. Now, why does a granuloma form? The granuloma forms when the body wants to restrict the bacilli. So, you have a bacilli and individual cells are not able to kill. So, the cells make a jail around it, make a prison around it. Okay. And the cells trained to form this prism in leprosy are the epithelial cells. And around that you will see lymphocyte. Let me change color. Yeah. Around that you will see blue colored lymphocyte. This is lymphocyte. So this is what is happening. A granuloma is forming. Okay. And inside the granuloma, you will have destruction of AFP. So AFB is negative. That is why AFB is negative in tubercular leprosy. We are clear about it. Okay. Now in this tubercular leprosy, the granuloma abuts the epidermis, leading to epidermal atrophy. That means the granuloma reaches up and touches the epidermis. Okay. So if you have a skin biopsy like this and you have the dermoepidermal junction, the granulomas reach up to here, leading to destruction of the epidermis and atrophy. Atrophy of the epidermis. Are you clear about it? So there is dense lymphocytic infiltrate around the epithelial granulomas. We have we have shown it here, and around the nerves. Okay, around the nerves, there is perineural inflammation. And that inflammation in tubercular leprosy is causing aciation and nerve damage. Okay. So, in, in indeterminate leprosy, we saw only perineural lymphocytic infiltrate. Okay. Slight of slight nerve damage. But in tubercular leprosy, the damage is severe enough to cause caseation or caseation necrosis or cheese like necrosis. And this nerve damage is solitary. Solitary means that even in a single biopsy, you can get one nerve that is damaged and another nerve side bite which is perfectly alright, only infiltrated, no damage. So you can have solitary cassiative damage of nerves in tubercular leprosy. So uh, now this is the tubercular leprosy. Okay, uh, uh, I've taken this from the IL textbook. So, in tubercular leprosy, you will see an epithelial granuloma with lymphocytic infiltrate with giant cells. So, this is one giant cell. Okay. Another giant cell. These red arrows are showing giant cells and you can appreciate the giant cells. You can see the, how large they are and so many nucleus are there. You can also see that the granuloma is reaching up to the epidermis leading to epidermal atrophy. Okay. So the granuloma is touching the epidermis. As we move towards the lepromatous pole, you will understand that the granuloma spares the epidermis or doesn't touch the epidermis. But in tubercular pole, it is touching the epidermis. And at the periphery of the granuloma, you can see lymphocytes. Okay. So there are focal collection of epithelial cells. You can see this area is a bit pink. This area is a bit pink. This area is a bit pink. Okay, I'll remove these markings so that you can see that some of the areas in between the granuloma are light stained, pink color, while the periphery has more of a blue color lymphocytic infiltrate. Okay, so that is what I'm trying to show. Let's move on. So here again, that's what uh, again a more magni magnified view, and you can see the lymphocytes here large cells with blue nucleus okay and you see see this large cell with blue nucleus base of the nucleus these are nothing but lymphocytes while if we move forward and see epithelial cells you can see this irregular shaped cell with a large nucleus and the nucleus is hazy uh, looks like faded nucleus okay faded Let me just write it again. Faded nucleus. And you can easily see that this is also an epithelial cell. This is an epithelial cell, or at least a nucleus of epithelial cell. And it is difficult 
to uh, find the exact cell boundary, all you can see is just a collection of vesicular nuclei, and that is what we see in epithelial granulomas. Okay, let's move forward. This again, this is a nerve tissue. The nerve tissue is nearly destroyed, and this and the center you have cassiation, cassiation necrosis, and this whole circular area. In fact, if you look properly, this whole area was previously a nerve. Okay, initially this whole part was actually a nerve, which has got severely infiltrated with lymphocytes, and that lymphocytes, uh, these lymphocytes have destroyed the nerve so much so that it has caused cassiation necrosis at the center of the nerve. And that's what we see in tuberculosis, sorry, tuberculoid leprosy. You see cassiation necrosis at this at the center of the nerve, which is significantly and severely infiltrated by lymphocytes. Let's move forward. Coming to the second stage or second part of the dropping spectrum is the borderline tuberculoid leprosy. In borderline tuberculoid leprosy, you have epithelial cell granuloma with some admixture of macrophages and lymphocytes. Now, as we move from tuberculoid to leprosy, there is failure of the human body to kill the vessel, to destroy the bacilli. And to destroy the bacilli, you require working active macrophages. So, what actually happens is you have a macrophage which, when activated, will convert into epithelial cells or, or histiocytes. But as you move from tuberculoid to lepromatospore, this activation is not that proper. You will have only macrophages. Not only, but you will have macrophages which have not yet converted into epithelial cells. And these macrophages will engulf the bacilli and store inside them. Okay, so as you move towards lepromatospore, you will start to see more of macrophages. There are scattered giant cells which are of the foreign body type. So initially in tubercular pole, you have more of Langerhans, Langen, uh, and Langens type of giant cells. While as you move towards lepromatous pole, you have foreign body giant cells. The epithelial cells are loosely distributed. The nerves are replaced by granuloma. You have a Gren zone present. So Gren zone is a sub-epidermal zone. Sub-epidermal zone, which is devoid of the inflammatory infiltrate. That means the inflammatory infiltrate is, is not touching the epidermis now. It is touching in the tuberculoid pole. Okay. In few lesions of BT leprosy, you can have that touch, but there's no significant epidermal atrophy. But Gren zone now starts to appear. Okay, and now fully formed Gren zone is seen in the lepromatous pole, but it starts to appear. AFP shows few fragmented bacilli because the body is not able to completely clear the infections. So a few fragmented broken bacilli are still seen, and the BA index or the sorry, the bacteriological index. Ranges from plus one to plus two. Okay, let's move forward. So look at this uh, this picture of borderline tuberculoid leprosy, and you can see that there is perineural. Can, can you see this wavy nature? Look look at the black arrow. You can see some wavy nature of neural tissue, and around the neural tissue you have like significant lymphocytic infiltrate. So this whole area is actually composed of lymphocytes and there is destruction of this actually complete infiltration complete blockage of the nerve complete uh, invasion of the nerve by lymphocytes and here you can see a bit of perivascular lymphocytes in the okay periappendageal lymphocytic infiltrate now uh, there is significant nerve damage in borderline tuberculosis leprosy and clinically also we see that major sensory loss on, from the area of distribution of a particular nerve is seen why? Because nerve is damaged. But as we move towards lepromatous pole, we see more of glove and stocking anesthesia because there is diffuse infiltration of the cutaneous nerves. Not a single nerve trunk, but a diffuse infiltration. Okay, let's move forward. So in this picture, we are looking at a giant cell. And we can see that it is, it has a, the nucleus are arranged at the periphery. And that we see in foreign body giant cell. Okay, foreign body giant cell. And you can see epithelial cell. Remember, slipper shaped nucleus, which is uh, a faded nucleus. And you can see a little bit of small, you know, blue, blue lymphocytes. These are all lymphocytes here. This is, this is an epithelial cell again. So uh, just look at this picture uh, without markings. I'll remove the markings. And look at this picture, and you can see a lot of epithelial cells. And you can use this picture to 
memorize or practice finding out lymphocytes and epithelial cells. Okay, these are so many epithelial cells are there. So this is what you see. You see epithelial cell rich granuloma with few scattered giant cells of the foreign body type. Let's move forward. Coming to the uh, next aspect, borderline borderline leprosy or BB leprosy. Okay. So in BB leprosy, the macrophages are further increased. So as a, as we are moving towards lepromatous pole, the macrophages and epithelial cells are increasing. The lymphocytes are now scattered. They are few and far between. So lymphocytes are decreasing and macrophages are increasing. And what are macrophages? These are those cells which have not modified to epithelial cells. So you have macrophages more than epithelial cells, which are a lot more than lymphocytes. Yeah. Grand zone again can be seen. The surviving Schwann cells within the granuloma can be seen and the nerve damage is less. Now understand this concept. As we move from tubercular to lepromatous pole, a single nerve trunk damage is less and a generalized anesthesia is more. Okay, that is why in lepromatous pole, we have a diffuse area of sensory loss. But the patches are normal aesthetic. That means they have their normal sensation. While in tuberculoid or BT uh, leprosy, we have a sens sensory loss from the patch, from the plaque, we see the sensory loss. Why? Because the nerve tr trunk supplying the plaque. Let's imagine if, if my palm is the plaque and my arm is the nerve. If the nerve gets infiltrated, the plaque loses the sensory. Okay. So in tubercular pole, one nerve trunk or individual nerve trunks are affected, while in lepromatous pole, there is a diffuse infiltration of cutaneous nerve. Nerve damage would be less. Giant cells are absent. A and B is positive because now we are moving towards those spectrum in which the body is not able to kill the bacilli. And the bacillary index is about 3 plus. Let's move forward. Now look at this. Just, just spend some few seconds and look at this picture. And you will see a lot of empty spaces in between. Are you looking at this empty spaces? Empty spaces, empty spaces, empty spaces. This is because this is a case of BB leprosy in type 1 reaction. Type 1 reaction. Remember, BB leprosy is the most unstable form of leprosy. And either it goes towards the tuberculoid pole or it goes towards the lepromatous pole. So this is BB leprosy. Uh, with a bit of type 1 reaction because what the, these empty spaces are nothing but edema. There is edema in the granuloma which is a feature of, of reactions in leprosy. Okay, And in the granuloma, you see all three types of cells. You see macrophages, you see epithelial cells, you have lymphocytes, but the lymphocytes are less in number. The granuloma now starts to appear pinkish rather than bluish that we saw in tubercular pole. Now it is appearing pinkish. Let's move forward. Again, this is the borderline borderline leprosy and around the nerves, there is infiltration of lymphocytes, epithelial cells and macrophages. And you can see that it has started to form layers around the nerve. Slowly, slowly, these cells are infiltrating the nerves. Okay. So again, there is a concept to understand and leprosy is filled with such concepts. The function of lymphocytes, macrophage and epithelial cells is to kill the bacilli. Clear? What happens that because of some reasons, the body is not able to kill the bacilli. So if you send one cell to kill the bacilli and the cell is not able to kill the lepra bacilli, you will send more cells. Okay, you will, you will, you will send a backup, you will send reinforcements and that is what is happening. The cells are continuously invading the neural tissue and destroying it. Okay. And that is what is forming the granuloma and you see a lot of granuloma and infiltrate. So in the tubercular pole, you see condensed granuloma, tight granuloma, localized granuloma of, of the lymphocytic variant. But as you move towards the lepromatous pole, you see more of a looser granuloma with histocytes. Clear? Let's move forward. Now, let's discuss the second segment, uh, sorry, the next segment, borderline lepromatous leprosy. Now, in borderline lepromatous leprosy, you will have macrophages, which are increasing. You will have epithelial cells, which are increasing. You will have foaming histocytes, which have just started to increase now. You have lymphocytes, which will be decreasing. Okay. So, with that picture, let's start our discussion on borderline 
lepromatous leprosy. In borderline lepromatous leprosy, the granulomas are made of macrophages which are a lot more in number than scattered epithelial cells and they are sparse lymphocytes. So now you understand lymphocyte decreasing, epithelial cell increasing, macrophage increasing a lot. Okay. Grain zone is present. The nerves may be intact with onion skin appearance. Now a normal nerve will show onion skin appearance. That is what we see. So you can see these layers of nerve like onion skin. Like when you cut an onion, this is what you see. So this is a nerve. Remember, prior to BL leprosy, prior to prior to borderline lepromatous leprosy, the nerves are completely invaded and destroyed by lymphocytes and macrophages. But now the nerve trunks are have started to become uh, appear intact. Okay, the giant cells are absent because the body is not able to make proper giant cells to control the infection. AFB is positive. You can easily see those. And you can have 4 plus of BI index and you can have small globi. So globi is nothing but collection of AFB. So when AFB collects and form groups, this whole group is known as a globi. Okay. Foamy change plus minus. That means the foamy histocytes. That means histocytes filled with foam. They can be there in a milder capacity. So remember, majorly macrophage epithelial cells a little bit of lymphocytes, a little bit of homeostasis. The nerve is intact, granuloma is loose, uh, a bit loose, and the brain zone is present. That's what we see in BL leprosy biopsy. So look at this borderline lepromatous leprosy picture I've taken from IL. So you can see loose granulomas, large loose granulomas. Okay, you can easily localize them. And they are more, and they are paler stain, they are pale stain. We will look at the other picture. This area is pale stain and this composed of epithelial cells. The black arrows are all epithelial cells. The red arrows show a bit of lymphocytes. Okay. So it's majorly the macrophages, sorry, the granulomas in BL leprosy is composed majorly of macrophages and epithelial cells with a sparse infiltration of lymphocytes. Okay. And you see a normal epidermis which is devoid of inflammatory cells and this is the grains zone grains zone okay and, and if a separate video is required to understand the concept of grains zone it is a very interesting concept uh, just mention in the comments and if i have if i get good amount of comments asking about a video on grains zone then i will surely make a separate video on grains zone okay so bl leprosy Loose granulomas, majorly made up of macrophages, epithelial cells, a little bit of foam change, a little bit of lymphocytes. Okay, let's move on. This is a nerve tissue. Okay, this is a nerve tissue. Can you see the wavy nature? The wave, wavy nature. This is neural tissue. And around the neural tissue, what you are seeing are the epithelial cells. So this is an epithelial cell. Epithelial cell. cell. You can easily differentiate between the faded nucleus of epithelial cell and a darkly staining nucleus of a neural tissue. So this is there is epithelial cell infiltration of the nerve. That is what we are trying to show here. Okay. And uh, the blue um, blue arrows. There is no blue arrow, but the blue uh, the bluer cells are more of macro. The, like this is a macrophage. Can you see the nucleus is not like epithelial cell? Com compare compare the nucleus number one and compare nucleus number two. Okay, can you see that nucleus number two is more uh, bluer but larger? It is not smaller and circular like lymphocytes. It is larger because number two is actually a macrophage, while the first one is epithelial cells. So now you can easily pick out, you can easily find out epithelial cells and you can easily find out macrophages. Clear? Let's move forward. Now coming to lepromatous leprosy, the other end of the spectrum. In lepromatous leprosy, you will see a lot of foam histocytes. A lot of foam histocytes. The lymphocytes would decrease. Okay? Foam histocytes, a bit of macrophages, epithelial cells, these are all there. But lymphocytes decrease, and you will see looser granulomas. Okay, the granulomas would be a bit loose. Let's move on. 
Now there is macrophage granuloma with foam, and we have told what is foam. Okay, these granulomas or these macrophages are AFB filled. Why AFB filled? Remember the initial third slide that we discussed in lecture that the macrophages are just eating the bacilli. They are not able to kill the bacilli. So they are filled with living bacilli. And the infiltrate, the granulomas, can involve the entire dermis. In fact, leprosy is one of the features seen in pandermal infiltrate. And this is an infiltrate that involves the entire dermis. Okay. Few lymphocytes are there. Gren zone is present. The nerves may be intact with perineural granulomas. We know that as we are moving towards the lepromatous pole, the nerve trunks are intact. The giant cells are absent. AFB is positive. Bacillary index is plus 5 to plus 6 with multiple large globi. Remember, if you see even a single globi, you can easily label BIS plus 6. If you see single globi, okay? A, a large globi, you can easily see. A large globi, globi, you can mark the biopsy as BI index of 6 plus. Okay, so remember one thing, macrophage granuloma with a lot of foam. Let's move forward. So look at this lepromatous leprosy picture. And I've taken this from uh, IEL textbook, page 139. Okay, can, can you see this sub-epidermal zone? This is nothing but gren zone. So this whole area where you don't see much of infiltrate. You can see that the infiltrate is just not able to touch the epidermis, just below the epidermis. This is nothing but gren zone. Okay, so we have seen the gren zone. Let's move forward. Below this line is the granuloma. And you can see that the granuloma is paler. The blue cells are less in number. The pale cells, the pink cells are more in number, and the red dots that you see are nothing but the AFB. Okay, these are the lepra bacilli inside those macrophages. The stain used is white caraco, which which differentially stains the bacilli as a red color, and you can easily visualize the lepra bacilli in white caraco stain, and you can see that macrophages inside the cells have a lot of bacilli. Clear? So you have macrophage granuloma with gren zone and epidermal atrophy here. Epidermis is atrophy. Clear? I'll remove the markings so that you can have a better look. Let's move forward. So this uh, picture is a magnified version of the previous slide. Not previous, but a similar slide to that. And this is also a fight faricose stain. And here you can easily visualize macrophages filled with AFP. Okay. This all the red clumps is nothing but AFP. So AFP is infiltrating inside. It is inside the macrophages. They are filled with macrophages. They, and they are laden macrophages. That means macrophages are, um, they are, the cytoplasm is completely taken by AFP. So in lepromatous pole, the macrophage lymphocyte epidural cells, they are not able to kill the bacilli. What it does is it just eats the bacilli and keeps it hidden inside. That's what macrophage is doing. So it is just collecting bacilli and keeping it inside. That is why macrophages are filled with leprobacilli. Okay, and lepromatous leprosy. Let's move forward. The uh, number of AFB in lepromatous leprosy can be so high that you can actually see lepromatous le uh, bacilli, lepra bacilli, inside the epidermis. So previously we have seen lepra bacilli only inside the granuloma, inside the macrophages, but they multi multiply at such a such a uh, quantity that you can in fact sometimes see lepra bacilli inside the epidermis also. Let's move forward. Now this uh, picture shows nerve involvement in leprosy. Okay. If you look closely and carefully, you will be able to appreciate a circle form here. Okay, so this is a circle. And you can see a little bit of waviness in between. Waviness. Only a slight waviness. This waviness is normal neural tissue. Okay, normal nerve tissue. I'll remove the markings. And you can see. Okay, now 
with this neural tissue you can see that a lot of empty spaces are there in between this is nothing but foam why because in lepromatous leprosy you have foam infiltrate foam a lot of foam inside the nerves okay so, if you look closely at this picture, you'll be able to appreciate that nerves are being infiltrated by macrophages and forming histocytes and macrophages have ARB inside them and the major cells forming the granulomas are epithelial cells and forming macrophages and macrophages. Clear? A little bit of lymphocytes are present around the nerve tissue, but the major cells taking part in formation of granulomas are macrophages and forming histocytes. Clear? Let's move forward. Now this again is a magnified, uh, less magnified version, it's a 4x version and you can see pan-dermal involvement, involvement of the upper mid and deep dermis involvement via granulomas, okay. And you can see that it is reaching up to the level of subcutis and in, in this area, this little area here, let me change the color, can you see this little area between these two lines? which is paired of the infiltrate, that is nothing but granulomas. So, so this diagram actually very well and very easily show you the granulomas. So pan-dermal uh, or upper mid and deep dermal involvement with uh, histocytic granulomas or forming histocytic granulomas with a presence of granulomas. That is what we see in lepromatous leprosy. This I have taken from pathology of lens. A good idea would be to go to the site and see them in clear, uh, um, you know, clear resolution. Now this is AFP stain. Okay. This is AFP stain, and this is just to show you the sheer amount of bacilli inside uh, the granulomas. So these large bodies are nothing but globi. Okay, globi. And singly lying AFB are also seen. So acid fast bacilli. The whole granuloma would be filled with AFB. It is AFB positive. These are live bacillus. Uh, these are longer, broad shaped lepromatous bacilli. So, uh, mycobacterium lepro lepre. And that is what we see filled with AFB positive cells. Okay. Let's move forward. Now, coming to the next segment, which is the histoid Hansen's or the histoid leprosy, let's discuss what is the special variant of LL leprosy. Is. This is a variant of lepromatous leprosy. Histoid leprosy is a variant of lepromatous leprosy. In histoid leprosy, you have localized crops of shiny nodules of different sizes. Remember, shiny nodules and different sizes. This is what you see. You will see a nodular growth. Not like tubercle and tuberculoid leprosy. Nodular growth of different sizes all over the body. Generalized involvement. There's hypercellular granuloma with spindle shaped cells. Now remember this spindle shaped cells. So there's a question that spindle shaped cells in seen is seen in which leprosy? It is destroyed leprosy. Now this granuloma grows and compresses the surrounding tissue and forms a pseudo capsule. Okay. So there is rapid growth of the spindle shell cells and they compress the surrounding cells to form a pseudo capsule. The cells are uniformly arranged in compact bundles and walls which mimics histocytoma. And because of mimicking histocytoma, this is known as histoid leprosy. Okay, because it mimics histoid histocytoma, the term used is histoid leprosy. The AFB is strongly positive. It is more than 6 plus. Large global solid organisms in parallel stacks and that stacks are known as histoid habitus. Okay. So multiple bacilli. Multiple bacilli clumped together in parallel stack. Sometimes it is known as, you know, a cigar shaped stacking of M. Lepre, and this is known as histoid habitus. Okay. A few epithelial cells without AFB can be seen, which are termed as epithelial contaminants, but this is not much of an uh, important uh, description. Just remember histoid apodis. This can be a good quiz question. Okay, so this is histoid leprosy. Let's move forward. So in histoid leprosy, we will not spend much time. It is of a hypercellular granuloma 
That means a lot of cells are there in the granuloma and they are densely packed with spindle shaped macrophages. Now, on HNE, it is very difficult to point out spindle shaped macrophages. I would request you to look at the textbook or go to pathology outlines and look at articles for the histoid leprosy, and you will easily be able to make out spindle shaped macrophages. In this slide, if I am if I have to point out, you can see some of the flattened cells, some of the flattened cells which are darkly staining as compared to epithelial cells and these are nothing but spindly cells or spindle shaped macrophages. The macrophages become spindle shaped and you can in fact see a pseudo capsule, a fibrous pseudo capsule. Okay, so they grow so fast that they compress the surrounding tissue and form a pseudo capsule. Let me just remove the mountain so that you can better appreciate the pseudo capsule. Clear? Any doubts regarding steroid leprosy, mention in the comments and I'll answer them. Okay? Let's move forward. So, in steroid leprosy, when you do an uh, AFB stain, okay, so this is an AFB stain. When you do an AFB stain, you see multiple bacilli. The slide is filled with bacilli because the BA index is more than 6. So it is filled with solid staining bacilli and what I'm trying to show here is known as the histoid habitus. Here. Okay, so parallelly arranged grouped bacilli. So here also is a histoid habitus, here also is a histoid habitus. Okay, so that is what we mean by histoid habitus. Clumped parallelly stained, like arranged like parallel stacks of M. leprae. And this is nothing but called as histoid habitus. We are clear about histoid habitus? Let's move on. Now, uh, coming again to lepra reaction, and we will be very quick regarding lepra reaction. If you have gotten the hang of lymphocytic granulomas, epithelial cell granulomas, macrophages, foamy histocytes, you will be easily able to understand lepra reaction, which is not that tough. Let's move on. Starting with type 1 lepra reaction. Type 1 lepra reaction, also known as sorry, also known as upgrading or reversal reaction. It is type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Remember, this is a very important quiz question. Type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. It is mostly seen in TT leprosy, BT leprosy, and some cases of BB leprosy. Okay. In type 1 lepra reaction, there is destruction of organism because the immunity is somehow able to contain the infection. There is inflammatory reaction of pre-existing plaques and nerves. Remember pre-existing because in type 2 reaction or ENL, you see newer crops. Okay? While in type 1, there is destruction and neuritis of pre-existing plaques. And it is because of collateral damage to host tissues via immunity. That means the immunity is so strong or the immunity is, is reacting so fiercely to the broken body parts of lepre that because of this intense immunity, the nerve tissues are getting damaged. Okay. Let's, let's move forward. This, okay, so there's fight between immunity and bacilli. The immunity and bacilli are constantly fighting with each other. The immunity is destroying the bacilli and because of that destruction, surrounding host cells are also getting damaged. And in the tuberculoid pole of leprosy, where will you find AFB? Inside the lesion. That is why the inflammation is there in pre-existing lesions. Okay, so this is type 1 lepra reaction. Let's see the slide. So, in histology of type 1 lepra reaction, when we look at a biopsy from a type 1 lepra reaction, we see redness. Clinically, we see redness. Okay. Clinically, we see redness. That is nothing but hyperemia. That means increased blood flow to the lesion. And under the microscope, we see dilated blood vessels and lymphatics. Okay. There is swelling clinically, which under the microscope is because of edema in the dermis. There are a lot of lymphocytes macrophages, neutrophils. Okay. Why neutrophils? Because something acute is going on. We are killing, we are rapidly killing the bacilli. We are rapidly destroying the bacilli. So, a lot of neutrophils are there to help the, the immune system to get rid of the bacilli. The disorganized granuloma. Okay? 
remember such fighting is going on that the granuloma is not that organized granuloma that we see in Hansen's. We see a bit of disorganized loose granuloma and that is called, that it has been used by some others as tissue panic. That means the tissue is not able to make proper granulomas. But now we know it is because the immunity is destroying the bacilli here. The nerves can have cassation and abscess formation and that is why you see a lot of neuritis. Lot of neuritis or nerve inflammation. Okay, so neuritis is a very uh, common feature in type 1 lepra reaction because the immunity is killing the bacilli and the bacilli is invading the nerves. So the nerves also get damaged. And that has been termed as immunological excision. That means immunity is transecting or cutting the nerve. So immunological excision. So uh, what actually happens is you have perineurum and you have nerve tissue inside and a lot of inflammation happens and the inflammation pushes on the perineurum but the perineurum does not give away and because of that it contains the inflammation and all the destruction happens in here. Everything gets destroyed here. So there is intense neural damage. You have intense neuritis in type 1 lepra reaction and the nerves get destroyed by cassation necrosis. It can even form an abscess. Why abscess? Remember neutrophils are there. And remember wherever there are neutrophils, you will have pus formation, you will have abscess. In severe cases, epidermal erosion can be seen and in fact focal fibrinol necrosis in the vessel wall can easily be seen. So look at this reaction. This is BT leprosy in type 1 reaction. Okay. So we see a large granuloma and we see some empty spaces in between. So empty spaces is because it's a disorganized granuloma. The cells are constantly dying. Okay? So that leaving behind empty spaces, disorganized granuloma. Okay. And uh, the empty space inside the dermis is because of edema, because of fluid extravasation. So in vegan type 1 reaction, you see a loose disorganized granuloma composed majorly of macrophages and lymphocytes with dermal edema. And with uh, sorry, with the uh, vascular congestion. Let's move on. So at this end, can can you can you appreciate these empty spaces? Empty spaces, empty spaces, empty spaces, empty spaces. This is all because of edema and disintegration of the granuloma. And you see giant cells here, the specifically. Remember, giant cells are more or predominantly seen in the tubercular pole. So you can see a disintegrating granulomas. Clear? Any doubt in any form of leprosy just mentioned in the comment and we'll have a discussion there. Okay, let's move forward. Now coming to type 2 lepra reaction of the ENL. In ENL, there's high bacillary load. Okay, there are a lot of bacilli. That's why it happens in the lepromatous pole or borderline lepromatous pole. And few cases of BB leprosy. So there is high bacillary load. Okay. It is because of type 3 reaction. Type 3 reaction is immune complex mediated reaction. And this is an important viva question or a quiz question. Type 2 lepra reaction is because of type 3 immune complex mediated reaction. Just remember that. Okay. If it commonly targets capillary rich organs like nerves, testes, joints, eyes, kidneys and lymph nodes. Okay. Highly inflamed skin nodules happen in crops. That means new lesions occur. Why new lesions? Because, where, because we have a lot of bacilli inside the skin and the cells are being targeted by the immune cells. So even before bacilli has the time to form lepra lesions, the ENL lesions form. And it's an acute reaction. It happens quite quickly. And there's intense inflammation in ENL. So highly inflamed new crops of lesion appear. New nodules of lesions appear over the skin. And the ulceration or the inflammation can be so intense to cause pustules and ulceration in ENL. Okay? Other features like fever and constant symptoms are there because of release of various cytokines. Again, go through the video on pathomechanism of nerve uh, 
uh, leprosy that we have made previously and you will have a better understanding what leprosy does to the body. Let's move forward. In histology of ENL, you see acute inflammatory granulomatous reaction. There are plasma cells in the granuloma. Why plasma cells? Because it's a type 3 immune complex mediated reaction for immune complexes to form. You need antibodies, antibodies and antibody complexes. They get deposited and those deposited cells are the target for immunity. And then immune cells come and they cause a lot of inflammation and that inflammation causes collateral damage. So you have inflammation and that causes collateral damage. That means damage to the surrounding tissue. Vasculitis is a very important feature of ENL. Okay, in ENL you will see vasculitis leading to local ischemia and necrosis. So ENL uh, majorly involves the capillary rich areas and in skin biopsy where do we have a lot of blood supply in the subcutis, the larger vessels. And in the walls of these larger vessels you have immune complex deposition and there is necrosis and inflammation at the subcutis level and you see vasculitis. So in, in the inflammation of subcutis, which we call as paniculitis, okay, which we call as paniculitis, if you see vasculitis with paniculitis, consider ENL, okay. So in ENL, what are the different things, uh, what are the different things in ENL which separates it from type 1 lepra reaction? You will see a lot more edema, you will see a lot more neutrophils. And you will see vasculitis. You will see deep dermal inflammation in ENL. Okay. Let's move forward. So look at this neutrophilic infiltration. Uh, I'm not going to point out the neutrophils. I think by now you should be easily able to find neutrophils and lymphocytes and epithelial cells. Okay. Since this is the last lecture from dermal pathology, dermatopathology series for now, you should be easily able to identify neutrophils. I'm not going to point them out. So there is heavy neutrophilic infiltrate in this acute anal reaction. Okay, let's move forward. And here you can see vasculitis. This all this light pinkish deposition is nothing but fibrinoid necrosis of the vessels. These vessels are congested, they are filled with RBCs and there is perivascular lymphocytic neutrophilic infiltration which is happening. There is blockage, this hole is a thrombi, this hole is a blockage of the whole vessel leading to localized ischemia and necrosis. So in general you see florid vasculitis, okay. Again, an involvement of the entire, uh, not the entire, let me just mark it again. This whole vessel is occluded. This whole vessel is occluded. This vessel is occluded. These are all because vasculitis which is happening. And in the background, you can see for me is two sides lymphocytes. Why? Because ENL most commonly happens in the lepromatous pole. We are getting the hang of it. Let's move forward. Now, finally, Lucio leprosy. Okay. Lucio leprosy was described by Rafael Lucio in 1851, majorly seen in Mexico. It's a non-nodular diffuse type of leprosy. That means it is a variant of LL. So it's non-nodular. That means nodules do not form, but it leads to flat ulcers, diffuse ulcers. So you have ulcerative skin lesion in diffusely infiltrated type of LL. And why do we have ulcers in Lucio leprosy? Because you have vasculitis with thrombosis. Okay. So the biopsy, the pathology looks like ENL, but you see a lot more thrombosis. And what happens is that thrombosis blocks the vessels and then it leads to skin ischemia and necrosis. And this leading to ischemia and necrosis is known as Lucio phenomenon. Okay. So if you have a biopsy here like this and you have dermoepidermal junction and this is the epidermis. And you have a vessel here. Let's say in Lucio phenomena, because of thrombosis, this vessel gets blocked. So if this vessel gets blocked, the entire area supplied by the vessel gets ischemic or necrosed. So this whole area will be ischemic. 
and this ischemia or necrosis is lucio phenomena and you see diffuse ulcerations okay it, it is so much so you can in fact see m lepre bacilli inside the endothelial cells of the vessels okay so if you have a vessel and the lining is made up of endothelial cells inside the endothelial cells you will be able to see afp okay and those afp acts as antigens for the immune cells to come and cause destruction and then that destruction leads to thrombosis which further blocks the vessels leading to necrosis and that is lucio leprosy in some of the studies a newer uh, species were isolated with and they named it as mycobacterium lepromatosis but the evidence is lacking that it is in lepromatosis that you see lucio phenomena Usually we see it in M. lepre also, but this could be a good quiz question. Okay, M. lepromatosis is implicated in Lucio leprosy. So this is a clinical picture of Lucio leprosy, and you can see these ulcerations. Can you see this diffuse ulceration? So it's a non-nodular ulcerative variant of leprosy, Lucio leprosy. So in biopsy, all you see is perivascular, perivascular. Why perivascular? Because vessels have to show thrombosis. So there is perivascular, periappendageal infiltrate of foamy histocytes. Why foamy histocytes? Because it's a variant of LL Hansen. It's few epithelial cells. Okay. So perivascular, periappendageal infiltrate of foamy histocytes. And if you look closely, the vessels are filled with thrombi. They are blocked by thrombi. Okay, so this is Lucio leprosy. Again, look at this vascular thrombosis. Look at the entire vessel has been blocked by a thrombi. So in Lucio leprosy, you see intense vasculitis leading to flat ulcers clinically. Let's move forward. Again, we can see thrombosed and thickened capillaries. And vessels, these are thickened. Can you can you see, actually appreciate that the vessel wall is thickening? Like here, it is thickening. Can you see here? It is getting thickened, and eventually it will get blocked. And this blockage will lead to ischemia, necrosis, ulceration, lucio phenomenon. Clear? Let's move forward. Now this is again an AFB, and and in AFB you can see the M lepre inside the endothelial cells of a vessel. This is a cut section of a vessel, and inside the endothelial cells you can see collection of M lepre vessel. Okay, let's move forward. So with this, I'll finish the uh, last series uh, in the dermatopathology. Again, recommendation would be these two books and slides. Keep looking slides whenever you see a slide uh, of Hansen. Look closely and you'll be able to understand a lot about the pathology of leprosy. These are the reading recommendations. I will not go much in details. I'll put the links in the description. You can go ahead and, and uh, read or go and visit these uh, uh, sites and articles. And uh, But in, remember to see the slides. Okay, but if you have gone through this video, uh, I think the pathology of leprosy would be very much clearer. Okay. Now, uh, with that, I finished the, on the segment on dermatopathology. We have started initially with histology of epidermis, and we have made about this is the tenth video, the uh, leprosy reaction pattern. So I have gone through histology of epidermis, histology of dermis, and eight reaction patterns. And with that, I'll finish the discussion on dermatopathology. We have been discussing it for more than two months now. And I will like to switch gears and discuss different topics. Next week, we'll meet again with a new or fresher topic. Okay. In the meantime, go through these individual lectures. Uh, I've made them with quite a difficulty collecting all the things. And I've tried to make the pathology uh, easier to understand so that you can intuitively guess what is happening, intuitively know what is happening. Okay. And looking at the thumbnails, it just clicks to me that I usually wear the same t-shirt while recording this these videos or this gray. So, okay. So with that, I'll finish this series. Thank you very much. 
any comments can be emailed to me you can comment directly below the video with suggestion of the option queries i will not take much of your time and let's finish this rather very long lecture on lepromatous tissue reaction pattern adios and bye bye